Well, we're back at the uh, at the Delta. When last we were together, we finished up the neck. I've since leveled off uh, the seat. Get ready to have that fit in there properly at the right height. So that's looking very nice. I'm very happy with that. Neck's looking great. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to uh, just pile in some holes in here, and I'm going to curve off the back. Um, the issue that people have with uh, Fender style guitars in particular is that, um, and although this is not particularly a Fender style guitar, is that any time a bolt on, you get this, uh, when you come up to the higher fret, you get this edge here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve this around. The neck plate that I'm using is a four bolt curved plate. Um, which is uh, very stable and I'm going to take this corner right off and I'm going to do that uh, I'm going to do that right now break out my cheese graters I didn't think that up myself. I rarely have to play that high up the neck. And I think I'll take a little, just a little bit more off, but that's pretty darn comfortable. That goes right in, shapes right out of the neck. Was, uh, the person who recommended this to me was Steve Brown from Trickster fame. And uh, we were playing the original prototype, and he said, yeah, it would be really nice if that, because uh, he has a tendency to have all those speed licks up in the, up at, you know, 21st fret. And uh, said to me, really nice if that weren't in the way. And uh, since he said that, I thought it was a great idea. And uh, since then, that's a feature that... Uh, most folks who have bought, not most, all folks who have bought them since the original have really appreciated that particular feature. are very playable.
Yeah, it's going to work out real nice. Feels good. And that's really all that takes. So when the plate is on, what we have is that. Very nice. Okay, providing some access holes for the wiring. Okay, looking good. There we go. Into nothing else. Well, you guys, I think uh, for me to play up here is very rare. But uh, well, you speed demons, that's good, man. That's good. All the way up to that 21st fret. Easy bending, no corners in the way. It's 
Got a good feel for it. Not too heavy. Well, let's see what the wood weight is. Well, that's not bad. We're starting out about 2.8 pounds. That's a pretty nice weighted guitar. It's probably going to be maybe 4 pounds when we're done loading her up. But there you are, Mr. Hodge. It turns out to be a really nice piece of cherry, too. Alright, now we'll proceed to do a round over. Got some sharp edging here. We're just going to do a round over. Clean it up. Okay, the one thing about guitar building is everything leads to more sanding. So I'm going to begin sanding the sides and edges of this. And uh, rather than bore you for the entire couple of hours it'll take to do that, we'll record a little bit and you'll have to uh, fill in the blanks yourself. Surprisingly, the edges sanded much better, much more easily than I thought they would. It's coming out pretty good. I have a couple of little spots here, but I have to make sure I get those. But they're looking pretty good.
certainly the natural cherry. And that's kind of what it would look like if uh, I just do a clear lacquer. Obviously, it would be a shiny finish, <coughs> although I could do satin. But I guess at this point, let me ask you, Jay, if uh, you'd be interested in having a transparent color. So you still see all the grain, but we have some color tint over the top. And uh, I'll let you decide. So think about your favorite color. Or your honey's favorite color. And uh, I'll send you a post and ask you the question outright. Because we're getting close to staining it up. <laughs>